and catching number 16, Brennan Ruck. And batting ninth, the claim in center field, number six, Reed Dramont. Starting pitcher this evening for the Eagles is number 11, Lucas Riegling. And the rest of the Eagles from Columbia. The umpires for this 2A championship game. Behind the plate from Rockford, Gary Vincenzi. Along the first baseline from Canton, Gerald Blow. And along the third baseline from Canton, Fred Marriott. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, you have to see three drives if you're able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps and face the colors to the left of center field with your hand over your heart. And join our soloist, Joelle Roberts, a senior at Tri Valley High School, as she sings our national anthem. We have come to the final game in the Class 2A boys baseball season. It's the championship battle. Matching the Joliet Catholic Academy Hilltoppers, the defending Class 2A champs, taking on the 34 and 4 Columbia Eagles. Hi again, everybody. Dave Bernhardt joined by my Hall of Fame partner, Mark Lindo. Two teams that were right here in Peoria last year, as we said, Joliet Catholic Academy winning the title last year. Columbia a third place finisher. Both teams had their eyes on this prize 365 days ago. Joliet Catholic was able to take it home, third place for Columbia, but they had their eyes on getting back here. Tremendous season for both teams thus far. You have two teams worthy of a championship. They've had a pretty difficult path to get here, but they've both advanced to be playing on the final night of 2A baseball. Hilltoppers from JCA, the visiting team tonight, a record of 25-8-1 under head coach Jared Voss in his 24th season, 616 wins. Here's the batting order that Voss will run out there. Tommy Kemp to lead things off at second base. Trey Swiderski, the right fielder. Jake Treiner hits third, and he is over at first base. Zach Beitler, the designated hitter tonight. He's batting for tonight's pitcher, Nate Simney. Vinny spotted forwards at third, hitting the sixth spot, Brett Holbert, center fielder, Zach Pomato, Ram Rosell, and Lucas Simulik round out the starting lineup. Defensively for the Columbia Eagles, Jack Steckler, Reed Drabant, and Tyler Rosecrans from left to right. In the outfield, Aiden Gathers, the third baseman, Dom Vagley, outstanding player, got the win last night. He is at short, Alex Schreckenberg at second. Brody Landgraf goes from DH to first base tonight. Brendan White behind the plate and doing the pitching. Wearing number 11 on the back of that blue jersey is Lucas Riebling. Riebling not big by stature, but big on the bump, only 5'9", 150 pounds. But he is 7-0 and on the season for his Columbia Ball Club. They have great faith and confidence in him. 47 innings pitched. He's got a very smart average, earned run average of 1.19. 
44 strikeouts against just 11 base on balls. So he'll be around the zone and he will count on his defense to make championship type plays tonight. Big wins for both of these teams yesterday in the semifinals. Columbia shutting out DePaul College Prep 9 to nothing. Julia Catholic with a 10-3 win over Quincy Notre Dame in the semis. Table setter is Tommy Kemp. He'll be the first one to enter the batter's box in this 2023 state championship game in downtown Peoria. And to call that championship game is my partner, the Hall of Fame voice of the Illinois High School Association. Here's Dave Bernhardt for his championship call. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I know you and I have both been looking forward to this one. Julia Catholic Academy representing the northern part of the state. Columbia, the southern part. Tommy Kemp to get things started. First pitch from Reebley catches the inside corner for a strike. Our umpire snake, Gary Bedzinski behind the plate. Gerald Lowe is at first base and Fred Marriott at third. Kemp will take that one for a ball. And Tommy Kemp, what a run he has been on here. The super sectional semis to this point. Well, he has been outstanding, setting the table on base. An incredible nine consecutive times in those two baseball games and he is so creative and dangerous on the bases he is a table setter with score runs checks it up takes it for a ball last night four for four with a walk drove in two and scored a run 375 hitter coming in the count now three and two Kemp got a ring last year in the state baseball championship. One in football. Now trying to get another one here tonight. He's going to get another hit. Five for five here in the state finals for Tommy Kemp. Ten straight times reaching base. And you know, he got to two strikes on his uh, on his at bat. The initial one of the ball game for him. He doesn't care. He just got up off the bottom, stayed back on that fastball, and laced it right back up the middle. Sets it up for Trey Swiderski. Swiderski, a hit in four at bats last night, scored a couple of runs. And head coach Jared Voss made a lineup switch, a batting order switch from what he had earlier in the season. He moved Kemp and Swiderski, the two returning starters from last year's state title team, moved them to the number one and two spots in the order. And Hilltopper's offense has clicked since then. Big cut from Swiderski. Swiderski, uh, Louisville recruit, one of two on this Joliet Catholic team. Louisville, obviously a top 20 baseball program in the nation, and they get two Hilltoppers to commit to them. 6'3", 215 pounder. Kemp the lead at first. Riebling gets that ball to the plate in a hurry and a strike in the outside corner. Swiderski didn't like it. Steckler in left, Drabant in center, and Rosecrantz in right all playing deep in the respect for the power that Trace Wodurski does indeed have, the pop he has in his bat. Second throw over, Kemp diving back safely. Kemp checked into this tournament with 19 stolen bases on the season. Had a stolen base last night. Swodurski jammed. Little looper to the first baseman, Landgraf. Really a quality pitch right there by Riebling because he took that big strong power hitter and even though he's not overpowering with his fastball he located that right in on his hands where he couldn't extend and drive the baseball. I'll bring up Jake Troiner. Troiner 6'3", 185 pound junior. A 442 average this year leads the team with the 11 doubles. Into the hole off the glove of Bagley. Runners at first and second for Julia Catholic Academy. Ball hit hard, inside out swing. It's going to go as an error. Vaguely is a play that he probably has made many, many times. And I think what happened to Vaguely on that play is he was already thinking double play before he secured the baseball and the force out at second. So the floodgate opened just a little bit with that error. Designated hitter Zach Beitler. Sophomore brought up late in the season with injuries. During his time up, he's hit over 400. Batting for the pitcher, Nate Simney. Kemp and Troyner at the bases, second and first respectfully. Lucas Riebling 
Delivers ball one. Yeah, how about Beitler? You know, you're around the sophomore season, probably dominating, but you don't think, okay, I'm going to be hitting the four hole in the state title game at that point. But luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and he just did that. High chopper. Kemp's able to get out of the way of a potential tag, and that high hopper will move runners to second and third. Really a great awareness, spatial awareness, I call that, by Kemp, who was able to elude that tag and set up a second and third situation, our first game situation of the night. Table set for Vinny Spadafora. Looks the first pitch inside. About a four a hitless in four at bats last night. Did walk and score a run. 19 RBIs coming to the tournament, so he can drive in runs. Yeah. White tried to pull that ball and strikes on that ball. Pretty much came through the right handed batter's box. Pointer at second base takes his lead behind the baseline. Now he'll creep in just a bit. Got a piece of it. The reason he's deeper is to take away the angle of Vagley for any kind of pickoff. So he takes away that angle, and then as the delivery starts to come, he goes into the geometric shortest distance. Is a straight line. Gotta love the intricacies of the game of baseball. It's just a few steps one way or another, yes. but it makes such a difference. It's about a four, a base hit left field. Kemp scores easily. They will hold Troiner at third, and Julia Catholic Academy hits the board first. Really nice piece of hitting. Got a fastball up and away. It was not located where it was supposed to be down and away. Get the ball up. It was hit hard. JCA coming off a five run seventh inning last night to pull away from Quincy Notre Dame. And what new Tommy Kemp gets on base and scores a run. It's almost automatic. Brett Holbert at the plate. He was three for five last night with a triple mixed in. He was very impressive. I love the way he patrols center field. He's got great speed, great baseball instincts. Runners at the corners. Line drive, base hit, another run will score. Coiner comes in. Spot of four, round second, into third. Two runs in, first and third for the Hilltoppers. Two two out RBIs and counting right now. Hilltoppers in swing mode. Three base hits in inning number one. Moving to baseball with authority. How about the last two base hits? Spot of four, left-hander went opposite left field. Holbert, a right-hander, went opposite the right field. Really good hitting mechanics, taking the pitch where it's at and hitting the ball, barreling up, not trying to do too much. Zach Pomato, sophomore catcher. He came up the same time that Beitler did. Pomato's got a lot of catching time, 3D2 average coming into the tournament. Last night, Pomato two for three, so that average is boosted, drove in a couple of runs. Lucas Riebling's been hit hard here in the first inning. Delivers to Pomato. The swings are not bashful. No, they have come out with great aggressiveness swinging the bat. And I don't think that the JCA team has swung at a bad ball yet in this inning. Two strikes, they might put something in motion here. They do. Throw through, into center field. Spadafora will score the third run of this inning. Really a nice job. You think the first and third, you're gonna let your hitter take a couple hacks. You get in the hole on two, it's like, Okay, let's go ahead and put a gamble on. Kind of surprised, to be honest with you, Columbia threw through to second base, had a throw through on, and Joliet Catholic creative on the bases and score a run with their speed. One hopper back to Riebling. And that will close out the top half of the first inning. 
a big big first inning for the defending state champs. Three runs three hits. Toss in a couple of errors and it adds up to a three nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the first. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Neil O'Donnell is in his seventh year as a head coach at Columbia. 177 victories for O'Donnell, including a third place finish last year. And here is his starting lineup. Jack Steckler, Dom Vagley, and Alex Schreckenberg, the top of the order. Brody Landgraf, the freshman at first base. Tyler Rosecrans in right field. Riley Etherton in the lineup tonight. He's a designated hitter for the pitcher, Lucas Riebling. The lineup rounded out by Aiden Gaither, Brendan White, and Reed Drabant. Defensively for JCA, Graham Roselle in left field tonight. Brett Halbert and Trey Swiderski. And then in the infield, Vinny Spadafora, Lucas Simulik. And on the right side, Tommy Kemp, Jake Troyner to catcher. Zach Pomano, Nate Simney on the mound, the righty. For the Hilltoppers. Simony is six foot one ninety pounds senior, three and two on the season, thirty innings pitch, three point two seven earned run average. First pitch to Steckler a little bit low. Jack Steckler had a couple of hits and five at bats in the nine to nothing win over DePaul College Prep. Steckler's job, just like Kemp, is to get on base here. Wants to get Columbia. A little bit of momentum re regained. Simney, good fastball on the outside corner. And a good take on 2 0 in the leadoff position. You got to make that pitcher come and throw a strike. Simney was capable. Got the veteran senior presence out on the hill. Working quickly, getting a piece of it is Steckler. Simney headed to Wisconsin Parkside. Super sectionally pitched in relief. Winning pitcher in four innings, struck out eight, only gave up one hit, one walk. Steckler right to the left fielder Graham Roselle one gone pretty good at bat by Steckler he got ball two, even it up at 2 2 hit that ball relatively hard but not at all to Roselle need to move to make that catch and that will bring Dom Vagley to the plate Vagley will be a Kansas Jayhawk last night he was dominant seven innings only gave up four hits struck out nine in the complete game shutout. Bagley picking up his 10th win of the season. It's not lost a game for Columbia. The Eagles, 34 wins in 38 games. Inside corner for a strike, 0 and 2. Back to back pitches on the inner third. In and in, he shakes one off. Yeah, I think he wants to come right back in his grill. He does. Vaguely, how about these numbers? He scored going into the tournament 55 runs, leading the team. 50 runs batted in, leads the team. His average went down last <laughs> night with a one for five performance. He came into the tournament hitting 504, 19 doubles, and 12 home runs. And Simney gets him swinging. And that was a really a quality pitch, and I will tell people why. We mentioned he went in, he went in. He went in again, got the foul ball, and then he extended home plate, which goes 17 inches. He extended that plate to about 18 and a half, 19 inches. It got the swing and a miss. Nice. 
Second baseman Alex Schreckenberg last night in that win. Two for four. A couple of runs scored. He drove in a run. And a stolen base last night. He's not been caught stealing this season. Yeah, he's 32 out of 32, and he had reached base seven of eight times in the sectional. And then the game last night, so he is their main man in the, as an offensive catalyst. Two balls and a strike to Schreckenberg. He'll be playing at McKendry, a very fine baseball tradition school. Down in Lebanon, Illinois, right? Yep. Ball into the dirt, three and one. Just enough of it. Three balls and two strikes. See, and that's a ball that Schreckenberg, as much as I love his game, because he really captivated me last night, that was a ball on the outer part of the plate that he tried to get the barrel around. Go ahead, hit the ball into right center field and run for fun, young man. Ball four, Hillshopper fans thought they had a K there, but instead, Schreckenberg down at first base. Now to the cleanup hitter, Brody Landgraf. Landgraf, an impressive freshman. Landgraf, 6'5", 200 pounder. 355 average. Yesterday, two for two, a couple of runs batted in. First pitch to him, misses. Went to the press room after their win yesterday, and he was at the press table, and he was asked, well, what'd you think? Oh, I just try to hit the ball hard, pick up my team. <laughs> oh, so kind and meek, but boy, when he carries a heavy stick. <laughs> Didn't want to brag upon himself. He has all the tools to be not a good baseball player, but a great baseball player as his career goes on. It's from the open stance. Short lead at first for Schreckenberg, dancing a little bit. You know, and he would join, again, we're projecting well in the future, but what a great baseball community Columbia is. Josh Fleming of the Tampa Bay Rays, a 2014 graduate. T.J. Matthews on the 87 championship team. Pickoff, ooh, Steckler nearly lost his footing there, nearly got picked. And they even have Trent Blank, who's the bullpen coach of Seattle Mariners, so they have some major league ties. Trent Blank was part of the 07 title team. Championships. As you said in 07. And he got him the pick at first base. Schreckenberg picked off. He doesn't believe it. Simney, the move to first. We've played one inning here in your 2 8 championship game. Joliet Catholic, thanks to that three spot in the top of the first inning, lead it 3 to 1, 3 to nothing going into the second. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Last two innings, JCA has come to the plate. Last night's semifinal, and here in the championship game, they have combined to score eight runs. An offense that at times early in the season a little bit sluggish, really relied on small ball. They picked it up big time here as we've come up to the end of the regular season and definitely here in the playoffs. Well, Kemp's been there all year. Hobart's been there all year, the big boppers, but you mentioned the addition of Beitler from Otto has really helped this team. That was a turning point. After the first pitch, it's Graham Roselle right into the glove of Reed Drabant, one gun. 
it's funny how things can work out, right? I mean, you have, you know, an injury situation, so you have to make a decision. You've got some guys on a sophomore team that are ready to roll. Byler Pomato come up, and as we said, Jared Voss says that was a turning point of our year. Lucas Samulik at the plate. And up to date, they've outscored their opponents at tournament, including today, 56 to 8. So you talk about dominant tournament run, that's what they are in. Samulik will foul it away. Hit less than three at bats yesterday. Freshman shortstop. Yeah, he really handles his glove well. Waits on that. Straight back again. So him make a couple run through plays yesterday and one in the hole that was beyond his years. Down the count. Lucas Riebling gave up three runs on three hits. His team didn't help him committing a couple of errors in that inning. Just enough to stay alive. Very impressed by both these pitchers who like to work with quick tempo create rhythm. Trust their defense. Look, Reebling's ready to get it and pitch it, and his defense will be right up on their toes. Yet another foul ball. You know, and just as you were saying that, uh, watching Reebling, it was a, a previous pitch, a foul straight back. A lot of times that's when pitchers will take yeah. their breather. He was right back, got the ball yeah, back, yeah. and he's ready to go, just as he is here after that foul ball. Samulik will go down looking. Reebling froze him with the breaking ball. That one went down and hard. That ball had to have dropped off plane about six inches. And bring us back to the top of the order and Tommy Kent. Kemp with a single a run scored. The second base, Treckenberg bobbles for a moment, recovers and throws him out, and there's your story of the night. <laughs> Tommy Kemp is retired. Ten straight. I'll tell you what, you think Tommy Kemp, he doesn't worry about getting taken out of the lineup, does he, for making it out there? <laughs> Ten <laughs> times an unbelievable run he has had. Hilltoppers up and down in order in the top half of the second inning. We go to the bottom, Columbia, four, five, and six, coming up. to get things started here for Columbia. He was at the plate when Treckenberg was picked off first base by Simney. Landgraf goes after a first pitch, jammed himself. An easy 4-3 from Kemp to Troiner. How about Kemp ranging far to his left, using his speed and his baseball instincts? And that wasn't an easy play, but he made it look very simplistic manner. Number five hitter is the right fielder Tyler Rosencrantz. Rosencrantz a senior, 6'1. Just a few ticks shy of a 400 batting average coming into the tournament, 390 coming in. Simney just misses. And kudos to Simney as well because he wants to work with a good pace. He will deliver this ball in about nine seconds between the last pitch. That's getting the job done. Rosencrantz two for four last night, so that 390 batting average will go up a tick. Both these teams swung the bat in the semifinals 
Columbia with 14 hits and nine runs. JCA scored 10 runs on 11 hits. Rosencrans one pitch away from reaching first base. I think Neil O'Donnell knows his team needs to scratch next. They don't get all three, but they can't keep they can't keep chasing a larger margin. Another jam job. Charging hard is Samulik on the run. Got him. That is a superlative play by the freshman Fidom. He just flat out charged that ball, ran through it, had just that bit of hesitation between transfer, between glove and hand, but was able to throw a seed across the diamond. Two quick outs to the designated hitter, the number six hole hitter, Riley Etherton. Etherton in that play last night. Nine. I make that 17 hits and 36 at bats calculated. It's a 472 average. You know, when you're real young and you're taught, you know, expect the baseball, want the baseball, that young man, Samulik, really does want the baseball. I would surmise that he probably takes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ground balls, and he'll continue to do that throughout his career. You know, and how about that for a team? You look over there and, you know, have a whole bunch of seniors on the field. And you look as a freshman sitting yep. at shortstop, but you have all the confidence in the world when that ball goes his way. And I'm sure he's been helped, honestly, by Tommy Kemp, you know, leadership on the as the middle infield. It's a nice shortstop second base combo. The ball and two strikes to Etherton. Batting for the pitcher, Lucas Riebling. 6'1", 230. Good block by Pomato. They're going to appeal. Did he go? They checked. He did not. Count goes to two and two. Good job by Pomato, though. He went, made the tag. He would have had out if he got the call. So he did everything in the right order there, the sophomore catcher. Breaking ball gets him looking. Nothing Etherton could have done with that. Another one, two, three inning. This time it's Columbia that goes down in order to complete in the books here in your 2A championship ball game in the Hilltoppers from Julia Catholic Academy. Looking to go back to back, have the early three to nothing lead. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> the innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. We are quickly ready to start the top half of the third inning. Trey Sordersky to lead things off. 59 runs accounted for between RBIs and runs scored by Swiderski. He's been around this program for a while. He's been around an awful lot of wins. Down the count, 0 and 2. 1, 2, 3. Swiderski will have a seat. That was a quality pitch. Strike two was a breaking ball, inner part. That was a fastball, outer edge, and he got the call, locked him up. Swiderski, as great a hitter as I think he may have been guessing there. Can't do that with two strikes. 
Reveling averages about a strikeout per inning, and that was his second here tonight. Reveling just a junior. He was their number two pitcher last year, so he has the experience. Played, obviously, in the state finals. Columbia of Championships, you mentioned earlier in 07, also in 1987, third last year. It's interesting because with that success, pitch to Troyner, fouled away. From 2007 to 2018, Columbia didn't win a regional. That ball got stuck. Yeah, where is that ball? It hit a water pipe and it's raining. <laughs> down the left field, there, there's water coming down on this level. How about that? <laughs> well, we're we're in a rain delay. <laughs> <laughs> They had to shut the water off. It's like the old fountain at Comiskey Park, right? <laughs> the alarms are going off. Well, they say you always see something I was going to say, have you ever seen this in a ball game, Dave Bernhard? <laughs> well, I see. Oh, it's raining. That's why they're. <laughs> yeah, and all the fans on the Columbia side behind the dugout <laughs> scrambling to get out of the way of the water. There is a vast and strong shower coming from the top level of the stadium. That foul ball hit a pipe. The pipe is spewing water <laughs> everywhere. If it's 90 degrees out here, they're getting a little bit of a little bit of a breeze of rain right now. You think you've seen it all in a baseball game. Well, in our home plate umpire, Gary Bedzinski looks up to the press box and he's yeah, laughing. You know, and meanwhile, you, you have the conversation. You have catcher Brendan White. He's talking to not only Troyner, but also Zach Beitler. Like, can you believe this? And Craig Anderson from the IHSA is, was in the booth right next to us. But I'm sure he's got to make some decisions here. Now, obviously, people, uh, this has no effect on the game. I mean, there's no, there's no water on the field. But there's definitely a leak pipe, and you can't shut the water off in the stadium. Yeah, the fire alarm is indeed going off, but there is no fire. But anytime a fire alarm goes off, you're supposed to have you're supposed to have a fire. Well, we we have a migration of Columbia <laughs> High School fans from behind a third base dugout. They're coming in front of us, directly behind home plate. I don't know if they're going to be dry here. Now the general manager of the Chiefs is like, oh my. <laughs> this is not something you could even consider happening. <laughs> like if you said, name the top 1,000 things that could happen at a baseball game, this would not be one of them. We are in a water pipe delay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what it looks like, you know, of course, we are right behind home plate. This is happening directly behind the Columbia dugout. It looks like, you know, on a hot day, you get the uh, the sprinklers that are set out at different festivals and such. And the alarm finally has gone off. Got a good shot. Of the, got a good shot of the rain shower going on. <laughs> well, we've had 90 degree temperatures all week. So I guess it would be natural to be a, get a cooling mist, though it a little heavier than a mist. It's heavier than a mist. If you can picture like, you know, Disney World, the mist that you go through. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And now they're bringing teams off the field. <laughs> well, given the forecast, I don't see one person here that brought an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, everybody off the field for Columbia. The umpire is getting a big laugh out of it. The foul ball was a, a good shot. Then all of a sudden, I, I heard this strange noise. Yes. <laughs> and then we saw everyone turn like there was a problem. Well, there is a problem. Those are parked here in Peoria. 
two way championship game. Three nothing Julia Catholic lead. One out here in the top of the third. You know we, we've had some levity but now the question is I mean like what do you do. Well as you said it's not reaching the field. Yeah. And now the alarm was one thing though. That's, yeah, another, right. that's the thing but, you have to. But there's to reiterate there's no danger. Right. There's no danger and there's no effect on the game. And, and here comes the fire truck. Right. Which, which has to come. Yes. And they have to give clearance. Well we would hope that the uh, water supply in downtown Peoria is not exhausted. I mean what would that call sound like if you if you called it into the fire department. <laughs> I mean they get the alarm trip but uh, hey we have a broken pipe. How does a pipe break. Well foul ball hit it. What. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by just watching water <laughs> come out spray out of a pipe. I'm just fascinated because. You know you and I have had chance to be not a hundreds of games in our life but thousands. And I've never seen a water pipe delay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And we got what 1500 people here tonight. I've never seen 1500 people watch <laughs> watching spray <laughs> happen either. Just, you know, this one of the few times I didn't, nobody's looking at their phones. No. Yeah, this is so <laughs> bizarre. We saw a fire truck just come by. We heard it. You know but the, the one question obviously the fire department is here and they will give a clearance. We know that will happen. But. I mean you, you can't if that's a main water pipe. I mean, you can't turn off the water right unless you can do it by section. Because you have people here you can't just shut off the water supply. No, how, how crazy is this? Is Brendan White the catcher? He was in full gear. He's taken everything off. He came up into the concourse. I think he's going to use the, he's going to use the washroom. I believe. I'm not <laughs> sure if he's going to have any water in there. Yeah, the two sections directly behind and encompassing the entire length of the Columbia dugout, the ones that are affected. Luckily that suite in that area was not rented here this evening. Well let's recap what's happened other than what's happening on the upper level here. First inning Tommy Kemp led things off the single he eventually scored there was an error involved by a shortstop. An RBI from Vinny Spadafora Brett Hulbert followed with one three runs crossing the plate. Since then nothing on the scoreboard. Six men have come to the plate six men have been retired one of them by way of a pickoff for Columbia. We're going to take a break we come back. Uh, I was going to say Jake Trainer will be at the plate I'm not so sure that would be the case. We're in a delay. A water pipe break. Three or nothing Joy Catholic back in a bit. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. 
This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Back at Dozer Park, where we are at a standstill, we see some clarification as to the cause of this water mishap. Producer Frank Blaine indicates that that foul ball hit a sprinkler head. And of course, once you do that, that all heck breaks loose. The head comes off, the water sprays out, it trips the alarm. And I feel like we're either running out of water. So don't see They shut much. things down. Yeah. Well, that was easy. No, it's still going. It's just it's blast. Definitely, yep, there's definitely water still coming out. It's let up quite a bit. And the, the noise level of that has gone down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It was strange at first. You, you knew the foul ball, and you actually heard the bang. And then all of a sudden, you heard a weird noise. And then you saw all the people below the... Uh, on the concourse level from Columbia, their fans gathered there, all looking up and then moving. So you think, what's dangerous? Well, they were getting wet. <laughs> That's why they <laughs> ran. Because they were running with yeah. smiles on their faces. But you know, there's a significant amount of water. If you take a look yes. right behind the dugout, that water is puddled up behind the it's Columbia It's come all the way dugout. down the stairs, yes. Yeah. How many times during the course of our broadcast do you say, have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen this? Yeah. That's a crazy one. You know, the, the, if there's, if it's going to happen, it's a good thing it happens now. We're early in the game, second yeah. inning, and granted, it's a three to nothing lead for JCA, but it's not a late inning pressure situation. Gives us a chance to catch you up on what's going on here this weekend. Back in 1A on Friday, that seems like a long time ago. Two semifinal games, each decided by one run. Jabot Catholic from Waterloo knocking off Goreville 7 to 6. In the second game, it was a walk-off for Henry Sinatchwine, a 2 to 1 win over Newman Central Catholic. We got things started in 1A this morning. Third place game won by Sterling Newman, 6 to 2 over Goreville. And then it was Jabot, an 8 to nothing dominating win over Henry Sinatchwine. And we moved to 3A or 2A scores from yesterday. So we mentioned two big victories, Columbia 9-zip over DePaul College Prep, Joey Catholic Academy, the 10-3 win over Quincy Notre Dame. And it was Quincy Notre Dame that picked up the third place trophy it's earlier this afternoon, 7-2 win over DePaul College Prep. And evidently the water is off. Fans will return to wet seats behind that <laughs> Columbia dugout. Play ball. <laughs> Eagles heading back onto the field. Reveling will get as much time as he wants to warm up. Jake Treiner at the plate. He will return to the plate. Neil O'Donnell making sure his pitcher does get an adequate number of warm up tosses here and be ready to roll here in just a bit. Well, we have some levity, no doubt about that. And now. Is your job is honestly refocus and get back. You know, you had that that high level of emotion, right? State championship emotion. And all of a sudden you have a big letdown as far as, you know, the levity of the atmosphere. You got to get that. You got to get that little swag back, whether you're on both teams. I think everybody in this ballpark also, you said cell phones were down for a while. I guarantee you everyone's been on their cell phone and texting and saying, you won't believe what just happened at the state championship game. Yeah, I just had to tell the <laughs> network, you know, it's a little hard to explain that we're on a rain delay without rain. <laughs> not a not a cloud in the sky. They were delayed by water. Hey, let's go. Here we're ready to have some more fun. Hey, let's do some baseball. Let's let's play some baseball. Brennan White, the catcher, has put his equipment back on. We're ready to go. One out here in the third. Jake Treiner, the number three hitter for the Hilltoppers at the plate. Another foul ball, and you flinch now that you're seeing foul balls. So Reveling got his warm-ups, and very smart, Nate Simney, 
down in the Joliet Catholic bullpen. He getting making sure he's warming up once again as well for Nathan. believe I heard our first base umpire Gerald Lowe said no pitch had someone called time I heard the word time I don't okay. know if time was called by any means a one two count there's two and two Troiner reached on an error eventually scored he came home on the single by Brett Holbert Fouled away, headed to a sprinkler head. <laughs> Never can tell. <laughs> we have Peoria Fire Department on scene, and they got themselves a foul ball souvenir. I got to believe those firemen, this is a call they've never been to as well. <laughs> a pipe delay at a ball game. One out walk to Troiner. Designated here, Zach Beitler. Beitler grounded out to third. It did advance a couple of runners. Skies this one. Foul territory. Staying with it is Brody Landgraf for the catch. Landgraf's hat fell off. Then he decided to throw his sunglasses off. And one hand had made that catch. Then he spotted four, a base hit to left field, drove in a run. He also scored later. He came home on a throwing error on a first and third when a throw went through into center field and spotted four, a scored from third. Three run first for the Hill. Spotted four took that base hit to left field on a ball in the outer part. Then Holbert right after him. Took a base hit to right field on a ball on the outer edge. Two really nice pieces of hitting back to back. Delayed steal. Successful except that it hits Troiner. I believe that got him the head. His helmet went flying. The throw bouncing in. And I have a couple of trainers hustling out there to second base. Joliet Catholic loves to utilize the delayed steal, but more importantly right now is the health of Troiner as he's got two or three people attending to him at once. Let's go to a quick break, please. Troiner down, and we'll take a break. Say this inning has had a range of emotions would be an understatement. Moments ago, umpires, players, coaches, fans were laughing at a water spray, and now the crowd has gone silent with Jake Troiner out near second base. Uh, he was headed there in a delayed steal attempt. The ball bounced in. Could not tell exactly what happened. His helmet went flying. But and the best the best news we can report putting the glasses on here is that 
they are speaking with him and he is speaking back and he's sitting up right now. So those are all good signs at this point. Well, it was immediate that the trainers from both sides of the field came running out to provide any assistance necessary. Possibly the strangest inning. Yeah, and you're right. It went from total levity to silence of concern. They're being extra careful with Troiner here. Well, and this is the hardest thing if you're a coach or your teammates. You have to accept that let the professionals do their job and you have nothing really to offer here. So the space is being given. You know, and it really is a like a sign of respect yeah. on both sets of fans here. Columbia crowd silent. Some murmurs, of course. But the mood has changed. And you're right, the Joliet Catholic coaching staff out and around in support of their player. But allowing the three members of the training staff right now to do their job. Troyner Jr. It was interesting when I came in early this morning. Our first game was at 9 o'clock. Came in early and was accompanied by one of the trainers that staffed the IHSA championship events. And you think how many times the trainers, the best day for them is when they don't have to attend yes. to anything. But when you need them, and I think that's what I respect most about athletic trainers, and we've seen them in action in various sports on various levels, is how they're observation is so spot on you know you might say well you have no action for how long and then all of a sudden something happens you know the incident and you run out there with the plan of treatment yeah trainers are taught they are they don't diagnose they recognize and there's a difference they recognize what is transpiring then they make the proper decisions and calls if need be Trainer sitting up now. He'll and get assisted a hand. to his feet. And the first people to react in a positive fashion was the Columbia side and the Columbia players. How about that? Two teams from opposite parts of the state meeting here in central Illinois. So I can tell you that he's holding his nose not the back of his head so that ball had to come up and hit him squarely somewhere in the middle of his face John O'Brien will take his place on the bases Lucas Reebling's like how many times do you have to warm up <laughs> before I throw a pitch Just really weird, Dave. You described it before. We had the the build up, the anticipation, right, of the beginning of a championship ball game. Then we had the excitement, especially if you're a JCA fan, of a, a big three run inning. So you had that crescendo, right? And you had all the action and activity. And it's basically the emotions come to a halt two different ways here in this inning. We'll restart again, and all of this happened within what one batter and a couple of pitches. So Vinny Spadafora at the plate, runner in scoring position. A couple of outs here in the third. O'Brien takes the lead at second. The call strike brings the count to two and one.
Dribbling the quick glance to second and another. Here he comes. Spot of four, a good pitch right in on his fists. Spot of four can drive the ball into the left center field gap. Big gap between Gerbrandt in center and Steckler in left. That ball would roll all the way to the wall if they split that gap at all. He's going to left field. It's going to get down. O'Brien being waved. Here's the throw from Steckler. It's a good one. He'll be in safe, and it's second base safe, and a four to nothing lead for JCA. Good piece of hitting, good base running on both ends. Spot of four not only drives in another run, but gets to second base on the throw through, and JCA is in business, keeping the pressure on. Now play number 13, Brett Hulbert. Brett Hulbert will come to the plate. He drove in a run in the first inning. A four to nothing lead. Hulbert goes hacking. And the one run on the board this inning thus far. How did he get on? Base on balls. Base on balls seem to always bite you. Hulbert, center fielder for the Hilltoppers. Going to pitch up. Two balls, no strikes. You're the infield right now for Columbia. You have to be aware, knowing the personnel capabilities. Hulbert can really run. So you're going to get pressure on you to feel it cleanly and throw the ball across the diamond efficiently. And that will plunk Hulbert. He'll be at first base. He wanted to hit. He didn't want to be hit. Been a rough inning for Lucas Riebling because of what he's had to battle through. Yes. And a well timed, well taken timeout by Neil O'Donnell trying to talk to his entire ball club right now and refocus them. The Belleville West grad played in the state tournament for the Kane County at Kane County Cougar Stadium way back in his Belleville West days. He's won two state championships as an assistant coach, playing for one here as a head coach. You know, he is one of those uh, assistants that you're, you're magic. Your first year, you win a state championship, you figure it's easy. Won a state championship as an assistant down in Memphis area, then at Columbia. In 07, they won the state title. When he was on staff, and now he's got his own team here for the second straight year, this time in the final game. You know, and I don't know that Neil O'Donnell thought it was going to be easy, but we've had coaches joke to with us. Yeah. That they say, boy, you know, this is easy when you're an assistant, you win a state championship in your first year. At the plate is Zach Pomato. Spot of four at second, Hulbert at first. This has been a long inning in more ways than one. Lucas Riebling to deliver on one and one. It's really strange right now. We keep talking about the emotions of this inning because Julia Catholic, let's call it as it is, at this point, they're in total command, right? But even they're like totally relaxed. You know, the juice isn't mm -hmm. going. There's not. It's just, just a strange, strange couple happenings in this inning. Holds up. Three balls and a strike. Evens it up now. Three balls and two strikes. Three and two. Runners first and second, two outs. They'll be on the move. They'll go on first movement, getting a great head start on this pitch. Pomato, 3-2 pitch. Rifles this one into the crowd, bangs off one of the seats and deep onto the concourse.
And called strike three. Pomato thought he might have a free pass. Not to be. Top of the third inning finally comes to a close. One run, it was an RBI single from Vinny Spadafora. Stretches the Joliet Catholic Academy lead to four to nothing. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Sharp has taken over at first base for Jake Troiner. Sharp, six foot senior. Hilltoppers strike for a run, and now it's very, very important bottom half of an inning, bottom of the third here for Columbia. They don't want to lose touch with the defending state champs. Yeah, I thought it was critical, quite honestly. I'm going to go back when it was 3 0. I thought they needed to get get the next run on the board. And now it's even more emphasis down four. I mean, let's call it as is. They can't get down five, six, seven runs in the middle of this baseball game. So they need to create something offensively right now. Nathan simony has been really rock solid thus far from 60 feet, six inches away on that bump. Seven, eight, nine, Aiden Gaither, Brennan White, and Reed Drabant. Been a long time since simony has been out there, but as you Notice he had been throwing in the bullpen, so he got his tosses in. And between himself and his coaching staff, really good that he did just that. Eagles don't like that call. One ball, one strike to Aiden Gaither. Rolls it out to Lucas Simonlik. One gone. So silky smooth. Brennan White, catcher, had a couple of hits in the semifinal last night. Now, Blake, number 16, Brennan White. Fastball right there from Simney. Struck out a batter in the first, batter in the second. White, 267 hitter coming in, but he has extra base power. Pull up that ball a little bit. Tell you what, Nathan Simnick is really, Simney is really in good rhythm right now. Got a really compact, effortless motion. Comes up over the top. Ball slicing away, right fielder with the red glove. Trey Swiderski runs it down for the second out. Really a nice running catch. We had talked about his speed, his athletic prowess, and he showed it right there. Trying to battle the sun a little bit as well as those shadows have extended. Not harsh shadows. Two outs to the number nine hitter, Reed Trabant, the center fielder. Trabant to play college baseball at Vincennes Junior College. Trabant boosted his batting average from 211 last year to 324 this season. He did it with hard work. And once you work hard, you have some success, then that just there's more emphasis in your mind that yes, I get the job done. 
ball and two strikes. And the other thing it does is for younger players on your team or in your yes. program, you say, well, you know, look what Reed did. Yeah. This could be you. Waves at that one. Strike out an inning for Simneys, facing minimum number of batters through three. And Julia Kathik will bat with a four run lead. <laughs>
Joy Catholic Academy State Championships in 1994 under Joe Ridegaro. He's an assistant coach on this team. And Jared Voss in 2009, 13, and last year, 2022. But Joliet Catholic and their long story championship tradition has never gone back to back trying to do that tonight. So Jared Voss, in addition to three state championships, also four other state trophies, a couple of second place finishes, a third and a fourth. To short, looking for one, looking for two, can't do it. Vaguely got to Schreckenberg, but being down the line was Kemp. Good job by Vaguely getting the ball to Schreckenberg and actually a pretty good turn, but not a chance with the speed of Kemp. So you see Samulik at the bottom of the order, Kemp at the top, just flat out run. This will be a base stealing opportunity for Kemp. Two out in the top of the fourth. Big cut from Trey Swiderski. Good job by Matthews. He went over on the first throw to freeze Kemp, and there he went with a slide step. So going to make him think. And time a higher leg kick. And he actually had him going back. To have the senior going back just tells you how dangerous you are on the hill. But the runner does not have a good read on him as of yet. Now he's extended the lead. Kemp was dancing back. So Dursky hits this one in the nose. One hops the center fielder, Drabant. Runners first and second. Again, the top of the order. Getting on base and making things happen. Jimmy Sharp to hit. This was Jake Troiner's spot in the order. Sharp came on to play defense last inning. Last half inning. Lefty versus lefty matchup here. Breaking ball didn't drop far enough. Jimmy Sharp's got to stay in there. He bailed a little bit on that breaking ball, lefty versus lefty. Got to keep that lead side in, head down, and think middle opposite right here as you get your approach to the plate. Inside out, off his fingers. Rebling with it, rifles it across. And that closes out the inning. No damage done here in the fourth. We're halfway home in your class 2A state championship ball game. It's the Hilltoppers and Joliet Catholic Academy on top, four to nothing. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app. For Apple and Android devices, download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Columbia will look to get started with the top of their order. Minimum number of batters face. Nate Simney. Walked Alex Schreckenberg with two outs in the first and then proceeded to pick him off. The Eagles got to get something going. And if you had the right guy that you want to ignite your offense, he's up right now. Jack Steckler. He lined out to left his first time up. That one bore in on him. And if he gets on base with Vaguely on deck, they can get something going.
Tried a backdoor curveball. Couldn't find the back edge of the plate. Good job by Steckler letting it go. Steckler, the ever so slight crouch from that left hand batter's box. It's taking account three balls and two strikes. Pitching him away, playing him away. Shade in the left center field is Brett Hulbert, the speedy center fielder. Steckler, the leadoff walk to start the bottom of the fourth inning. That was a quality at bat because he got behind on the count. And Simney was on the edge a couple different pitches, but Steckler didn't bite. Don Bagley looking for something big from the senior. Simney with about an 87 mile per hour fastball over to first base. Short lead down by four. Bagley hits this one hard deep to left center. And this ball bounces over the fence. Just nearly misses going out and Bagley comes up with that big hit. Well, Ground we, rule double. Yeah, we talked about Seckler being a catalyst. He got on base with a quality at bat. Don't you ever forget that. And he set the table for the big bopper who drove that ball about, what, 345, 350 feet. One bounced over the wall. If it wouldn't have hit the track, he would have stayed in the ballpark, and obviously Steckler would have scored easily, and it probably would have been a, a triple. Well, that brought the Columbia crowd up. Ryan Quigley now coming to settle down his pitcher. And that'll buy a little time for some folks headed down to the Joliet Catholic Academy bullpen. Mike Tooman with the slow walk down. Tooman actually came into this tournament leading the team in innings pitched. So a walk and a long double. And you got uh, two scenarios here to take a look at. If you're Columbia, quite honestly, you're happy if you just get those two runs mm -hmm. and cut it to four to two. And quite honestly, if you're Julia Catholic, you'll be happy if you just keep it to four to two. I mean, you'd love to have that four another, but you know what I mean? If, if they give mm -hmm. up a run or two and they still have a, a two run lead. So Columbia looking for two runs and Julia Catholic looking to stay out of a big inning. Nobody gone for Alex Schreckenberg. Infield back, they'll give the run here. Amato smothers it at home plate. What a great effort. Went down to his knees on a ball that was what? Foot and a half outside. Yeah, Brody Landgraf on deck. And he can charge a baseball. That one will get away, and that one will score a run. Columbia is on the board. A wild pitch scores Steckler. Bagley advances to third. Tommy Kemp in there trying to build some confidence back in his pitcher. Simney was cruising, wasn't he? Just like that, it hits. Chopper, this will be enough to score another run. Kemp has to hurry to get the out at first base, but the RBI ground out from Alex Schreckenberg, and this lead has been cut in half. So we'll see how the rest of this inning pans out. I'll repeat the point I made just a moment ago. Columbia needed two runs. They got them. So they've done their job. They've had the lead. Joliet Catholic needs to stay out of a big inning. They got, gave up those two runs. Can they shut the door right here and keep that two run lead? Freshman Brody Landgraf loops this one in the left field and it's down. <laughs> Tying run will come to the plate just like that. That tying run 
is in the form of Tyler Rosecrans. A Columbia students behind the dugout. They had been waiting to explode. And they've done that just now. It's definitely pick them up in your crowd, Mike. Rosa Cans 390 hitter. He was robbed on extra play by shortstop Lucas Simulek. Last time up. We play ball at Hannibal LaGrange. One of many Columbia players going to play at the next level. I believe there is, is it seven or eight of the seniors. will move on after a play for the Eagles. There's 14 seniors on this team after having a relatively young team last year with only four seniors on the roster. They knew they had a lot coming back and they've done what they've intended to do. Let's get back here with a title opportunity. Now one thing Neil O'Donnell the head coach for Columbia said we are carrying a bigger roster this year yeah. and part of that is okay you have these great seniors but you still have to accommodate lower classes because they are your future. Rosa Kranz will look at a strike. No balls and two strikes. Simi looking to keep this ball down. Try to get a ground ball, double play ball. In the air, foul out of play. And he left that breaking ball up. Very hittable. Rosencrantz just couldn't get the barrel on top of it. Amount who wanted it outside, not quite that far. Landgraf not an extended lead at first base. Freshman stands 6'5, weighs 200 pounds. Rolls it out and underneath the glove, a spot of four. Uh, and there will put runners at first and second. This inning rolls along. That ball just scooted right past Botaforo. Play he should have made. He was thinking double play instead of thinking, you know, glove the baseball play from there. He was already looking towards second. And now it's Simney's job to pick up his teammates right here. Make a quality pitch. He's still a ground ball away. Designated hitter Riley Etherton. Struck out looking. Pick off a tip. Close. Kemp thought he had him. Landgraf got back. Had that ball been just a yes. wee bit more towards the third base side, that would have been a big out. Really good feet by Simney and a good tag by Tommy Kemp, albeit just a bit, bit too late. That will shorten Landgraf for sure. Justifiably so. I'll go straight on yep. this time. You know, the one thing Landgraf has to work with just with everybody's positioning is third base umpire Fred Marriott is standing there kind of in line with the pitcher Simney. So Landgraf has to be careful he can't get screened from a potential pickoff. Fastball misses up. Heather just shaking his head. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, good take by me. <laughs> I'm ahead on the count. Simney and face the minimum through three innings. Then will stare down a strike. Four of the first five hitters in this inning have reached base. Pitch to Etherton. Amato has to go down and get it. Hitters count here for Riley Etherton. Etherton can sit on a fastball right now. 
And if you're Simney, do you have confidence you come double up on a breaking ball here? Short lead Landgraf at second. Etherton fouls it away, skips on the roof, and heads to Adams Street here in downtown Peoria. Simney had been effortless the first three innings, and everything this, every pitch right now is high leverage. Two and two to Etherton. Again, Pomato. Wild pitch has already scored one run this inning. Three balls, two strikes, one out. This possibly could be Simney's last pitch if he's not effective with it. Tuman appears ready to go yes. in the bullpen. Pickoff throw again. That time again, that Simney left it up on that first base side of the bag. Yeah, it is hot pivot. He's not getting his arm on top. Dropping watch, down just a little bit. Now watch for a potential pick at first base here on that 3 2 count. Nope, he'll deliver. Netherton will stake strike three. He had a good pitch. He knew he missed it. Big strikeout for Simney. And I believe that pitch at this point kept Simney in the game. Spot of four went into his pitcher. He said, thanks for picking me up. I guarantee you that's what he said. Great teammate right there. The job's not done, but he knew he got the next out. Spot of four waving to Rossell in left field. In, in, in here. For Aiden Gaither. Rolls it out to Simulik. The force at second. And the inning comes to a close. However, two runs hit the plate. The lead cut in half through four. Joy Catholic Academy looking to go back to back, leading Columbia four to two. Hey, conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. Boo! My kid heard that solo! You say it like it? Yeah, Come on! High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination. NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. Now the Joliet Catholic dugout. Pretty lengthy conversation between pitching coach Ryan Quigley and head coach Jared Voss, obviously talking about what kind of decision they're going to make with their pitching situation. First pitch swinging. Short left field. Zach Beitler will fly out to Jack Steckler. Okay, I'm going to take you back before we go into that uh, conversation with Quigley. Take you back to your comment you made before last mm -hmm. inning started. If Columbia could get two runs, they feel great. Yes. If Joy Catholic can allow just two after the first two men reach, they feel just fine. Still. I still feel that way, yes. The, the only momentum maybe stolen back by Julia Catholic is that they left stranded two runners on, two Columbia runners on. But I think both teams happy where they're at. Columbia back in the ball game, and Julia Catholic was able to stem the tide and carry a two-run lead in the last three innings of a state championship. So both teams 
probably feeling good going into inning number five. Many spot a four at the plate. A couple of singles, a couple of RBIs. Fifth place hitter for the Hilltoppers. On the mound, Brady Matthews. Four runs, six hits, one error for the Hilltoppers. Two, two, and two for the Columbia Eagles. Matthews hits that outside part of the plate. Spot of four will head back to the dugout. Second strikeout for Brady Matthews. Two up, two down in the fifth. Matthews used the MVPs of pitching. Great movement on his ball. Velocity's changing speeds and placement. He located that ball right where he wanted. This is a slow the tempo timeout for Joliet Catholic. Trying to get Matthews, who's in rhythm, out of that rhythm just a bit. Be interesting to see who will take the mound for Joliet Catholic next inning. Hulbert, single with an RBI, and he's also hit by a pitch. Matthews got that one right in Hulbert's kitchen. Matthews working quickly, and Hulbert hit for the second time tonight. Throws that bat away in disgust, same with the elbow guard. He's been on base all three times, and along with Tommy Kemp, when he's on base, things happen, because he is indeed another speedster for his team. Hulbert headed to North Central College as Zach Pomato makes his way to the plate. Left fielder Jack Steckler playing pretty deep for the left handed hitting. Pomato. That pitch up and in off the glove of White. A wild pitch will send Hulbert to scoring position. So that was a gift right there. So they're going to try to take advantage of that. The hit batsman a wild pitch. A runner on second who's really who's really done nothing to quote unquote earn it. Lights on here at Dozer Park. Coming up on 8 o'clock. Right over the top. And right on the edge. Tough to pick up. Kind of a gray type of sky right now between light and dark. The lights have not taken full effect. Lefty on lefty and Pomato will foul it away. Matthews a pitch away stranding runner out out at second base. Big big gap in left center field. Into the air. Who wants it. Shortstop Dom Bigley will make the call make the catch. And JCA will strand a runner at second. Well now Columbia comes back to bat last time they were there they scored two they trail by two we go to the bottom of the fifth. Here in your class 2A state championship game. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Joliet Catholic has made a re-entry and it's number 22 over at first base. That is Jake Troyner. 
And that is extremely good to see. Obviously, from a baseball standpoint, if you're a JCA fan, but more importantly for everyone here to know that Trainer, who was injured and down for what, six, seven minutes at least. Oh, at least, yes. Hit by a thrown ball. Glad, thankful to see that he is back and ready to play baseball. Brennan White will come to the plate. Seven people came to the plate for Columbia in the fourth inning. Two of them scored. White, the number eight hitter, leading it off to be followed by Reed Durbont and then Jack Steckler at the top. Crucial inning here for each of these teams in a four to two game. Simney back on the mound. I think he was one pitch away from being replaced last inning. That three two pitch with one out. He got the strikeout, then the third out of the inning. Basically pitched over the air by Spotafora. Mike Tuman has thrown a game down in the bullpen. He continues to throw. He's not going 100% here, just staying loose. That nearly clips White. He had to do it all over again. He may have hung in there. And the hat signal came from dugout. To a bullpen, is he ready? And it was the answer was yes. Three and one count. Ball four. And that may be Simney's last batter. No movement from the yeah, JCA dugout yet. Chase Schrader be the courtesy runner for White at first base. So a now, of, a lot of discussion with the Joliet Catholic mm -hmm. Academy staff right now. Sure, here what that decision is going to be, but we know he's ready down in the bullpen. There's he was ready last inning. I mean, it's so it's Pomato went out to talk with Simney, I think, to buy a little bit of decision making time here for JCA. Now, there's two of the staff going down to the bullpen, two man job. Reed Durant. Patiently waiting at the plate. Now he'll step in. They're communicating with Trace Swiderski out in right field. There's that long anticipated. We thought we might see. It just took a while to see it. So Swiderski will come out of right field. He will head into the bullpen. And that will be it for Simney. And he gets a good hand. So Swiderski comes out of right field into the bullpen down the right field line during this pitching change. He'll get a chance to get loose. The new pitcher will be Michael Tuman, six foot 165 senior, his 13th game. He's pitched 49 innings, four and two. On the season. 56 strikeouts against 13 base on balls. That is a nice number and a minuscule 1.86 earned run average. And his job is to keep his team this four to two lead with a runner on first and nobody out. Well, Swiderski is. To take this time to get loosened up. He'll go back into right field once yes. all the warm up tosses are completed. They'll take as long as they can here to complete these warm up pitches. Jared Voss took a 
as much time as he could. Mm -hmm. And I think the decision was made. They were just biding time, biding time. Jared Voss says when Mike Tuman throws three pitches for strikes, he's tough to beat. Jared Voss, JCA grad, 616 wins. Are you kidding me? You know, I saw that number, and obviously we've watched them build. But yes. Boy, that that's a lot that's of a lot of wins. victories. He's done that in 24 years. You're talking about 25 victories a year. Columbia too good a team not to make a run here in the state championship mm -hmm. and the run continues. A little bit of pressure baseball right here. 19 straight wins at one point in the season. Columbia played 12 games against 3A and 4A teams. Drabant puts it down. Lob. Ooh, that took a long time to get there. Just floated from Tuman to Troiner, but it advances the runner to second. I like that bunt for a few reasons. You know the first one I'm going to say, just because it puts pressure on the defense. Secondly, it advances a runner. Thirdly, you have a couple RBI guys coming up right now. First one being Steckler, and then actually two, three, and four, all for them. So they got a chance to slice this lead in half again. Lead at second to Schrader. Neil O'Donnell. Third base coach, the head coach for the Eagles. Position, so he is only looking at second base. He has no idea what could happen here with Steckler. All he cares about is making sure that Schrader does not get picked. Tommy Kemp loves to call that pickoff. Don't know if that came from the bench with a catcher flipping his glove or if Kemp's just saying, let's stay aggressive defensively. First pitch to Steckler. He showed bunt, pulls it back. Well, remember Steckler's base on balls. Remember he was down one and two and then he, he ended up with get a base on balls. That's what started that inning. That was really a good at bat. Tuman's delivery. Big cut out of play. He says middle innings don't have drama. State championship game in class 2A. Columbia trying to battle back from a four to nothing deficit. Motto goes to work again. What do you think that is? At least five, seven. I was going to say half a dozen. Yep, yeah, and that he's blocked, breaking balls in the dirt. So nice to pitcher staff to know that you can throw that breaking ball down there and have confidence in your catcher. Steckler inside out, onto the berm, out of play. But Steckler really tracked that ball extremely well. Let that ball get deep to him. Took a good pass to the baseball. So he is picking up the delivery. Dead ball that hits Steckler. Runners first and second with one out. And now come the thumpers. Yes, they do. You have Dom Bagley at the plate. He almost hit one out of here last time out. Bounced it over the left center field wall. And they are moving the defense way back mm. right now. Justifiably so. And who's on base? Uh, base on balls and hit batsman. Two freebies. One gone. First pitch to Vagley. Called strike. Center fielder Brett Holbert actually playing normal depth, but definitely shaded to left center. Right fielder Swiderski straight away. Vagley has a lot of room 
in right center field. Of course, there's a lot of room beyond the fences here at Dozer Park as well. Good time out by Vagley. Too long a look he felt by Tuman. Tuman with a great pitch and Vagley with a great take, quite honestly. Not a pitch he knows he might get one to work with before all said and done. Same spot. Strike two. And there you got to tip your hat. Back to back quality pitches. Vagley struck out earlier on a breaking ball outside of the zone. That was back in the first inning. Long look in by Tuman. They want to go there again and they ring him up. They went edge, edge, and outside the edge and got the call. And that's what happens when you've gotten the first two. Vaguely, with great discipline, quite honestly, did not did not cause any kind of stir on that call because he didn't think it was a strike. Obviously, home plate umpire did. Gary Budzinski behind the plate. He'll be calling the pitches here with Alex Schreckenberg up. Schreckenberg with 11 doubles this year, but not the long distance pop of Vagley. Two gone. Schrader at second. Steckler at first. Wave through it. bit too long for Schreckenberg. Every pitch right now is a meaningful one. Every pitch right now high intensity. <laughs> Schreckenberg one strike left to play with. And jumping out of his shoes here. Two and one strike away from Staying with a two run lead. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is a pitch Tuman wants to get him on. He does not want to go to three and two with both runners going. It's a whole different scenario on the bases. Tuman's ready. The pitch out of play. Once again, left fielder Roselle, center fielder Hulbert playing Schreckenberg to go that way. It's always interesting. These pitches are being called from the bench, but we've seen Tuman shake it off a couple times. You know how many coaching staffs you allow your pitcher that feel to call off or not? Spoils another one. That was a good pitch by Tuman. Back to back off speed. And there's another shake off. The 2 2 pitch. <laughs> Rung up. So back to back called third strikes. Close out this inning. Tuman comes in and pitches out of a jam. Columbia comes up scoreless. We've played five complete and a four to two lead for the defending champs. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. 
Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Chillick Catholic has 12 multiple sport guys. That means they've been through every kind of situation you could be through, and they got a couple more innings of situations to be through now. Brady Matthews going to work here. He's in his third inning of relief. First batter he faces is Graham Roselle. Matthews has been good as he's continued to pound the zone, working very quickly and efficiently. One, two, three, three pitches. Down goes Roselle. Third strikeout for Matthews. Lucas Simulik has an infield single to his credit tonight. Another one of those guys, if you're a middle infielder right now, you have to be very aware of who is hitting slash running because you're going to have to feel the ball and get it across the diamond in a hurry. Fouled straight back. Waited for the thunk on top of our press box roof. It exceeded it by a bit. There's no sprinkler heads back here, are there? One way. <laughs> we we could not. get wet. <laughs> Simulik will follow this one back into the stands. And for those of you that may not have been around, what was that, maybe an hour ago? We had a delay of what, a good 15 minutes when a foul ball, and interestingly enough, it's the same guy that was involved in a couple of delays. Evening, foul ball by Jake Troyner hit a sprinkler head. Water was spraying out. Alarms were going off. Had to wait till the fire department to come to get things shut off. Troyner eventually walked, stole second. And then was injured on the play. And was down for quite some time. We're back to playing ball now. Troyer back, Troyer back in the ball game. All back to normal. Yep. Four to two championship game. Freshman Simulik battling hard here. Good waste there. That ball was in the zone. He was able to get the barrel to it at the last second and just foul that off to get himself another pitch to take a look at here. He is spoiling everything. Boy, and that is so tough as a pitcher. You think, man, I yeah. really made a great pitch there. Got him on a high fastball. High hard right there. Similar couldn't get on top of that. So in that particular instance, the left-handed slants of Brady Matthews won that particular battle. Two outs, Tommy Kemp, top of the order. A single, a ground out, and reached on a fielder's choice. That ball ran away a little bit from Kemp. And Matthews is dealing right now, and you can see his pace has picked up. Yes, and he's—I don't want to say he's rushing the JCA hitters, but they're jumping right back in the box. Kemp keeps the bat alive. Looking ahead to the sixth, four, five, and six in the order for the Eagles from Columbia. Thirty-four wins and four losses for Columbia. One got away. Kemp ready to go. Bagley will retreat from a shortstop position. Snag it for the third out. McLean, one, two, three inning. Time for Columbia to 
get to the plate. They're looking for some base runners, looking for some runs. Down by two here in your 2A championship game. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of this event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Brody Landgraf. Looking to get things started. Good man to start with the way he swings the bat. Michael Tuman on the mound. He came out in relief last inning. Langraff flinched a bit, took it for a ball. Tyler Rosencrantz, Riley Etherton, the next scheduled hitters. Or Neil O'Donnell's Columbia Eagles. Two balls and no strikes. I grab a 355 hitter coming into this tournament. He's had himself very impressive showing here. Waves at that pitch from Tuman. Two out of two yesterday, one for two today. Pulled off that ball. Like any other hitter, he's best when he still, you know, hits the ball the opposite way, stays tall over the ball as long as he can. This may never come down. Foul territory. Jake Troynert stays right with it. Big out for the Hilltoppers. Title Rosecrans, 0 for 2. Grounded out, reached on an error. Now the outs are starting to dwindle down for Columbia. And if you're Columbia, not only are you chasing two runs, but you need at least, honestly, to get a couple runners on this inning and turn that lineup over to get the to get to the top of the line where they're really, really dangerous. But as of right now, if Tuman can keep them at bay, they'd finish with the bottom of the order starting the seventh inning. Pitch to Rosencrantz. One ball and two strikes. One gone here in the sixth. A three run first inning for Joliet Catholic Academy. Got things rolling. Add another run in the third. Two in the fourth for Columbia. Rosencrantz right on a line. Graham Roselle is there and somehow makes the catch. That ball carried on him. Roselle had to leap backwards to make the grab. That was a strange one. That ball was hit right on the screws driven by Rosecrans. But I'll tell you what, Roselle, that ball was hit. He thought he had it. Mm -hmm. And then the ball kept carrying. And we all thought that's going to be over his head. And then he just speared it at the last second. And you had to wait for a minute to make sure that he held on when he hit the turf. That would have been a double, maybe a triple, had that catch not been made. Well, a big second out here in the sixth inning. Riley Etherton against Tooman.
This is the number six hitter in the order with two outs in the sixth. He wins it up at one and one. Atherton lifts this one high. Ozell, a little bit easier play here. And we'll make the catch. It's a one, two, three inning. Mike Tuman has retired five straight. We head to the seventh. If you've been with us during this tournament, seventh innings have been very, very entertaining. Four to two, JCA. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> This weekend, we'll have eight more next weekend from Joliet, but our thanks go to our NFHS crew here in Peoria. It's been great spending time with Frank Blaine, the producer, and our camera operator, Dylan Soderstrom. So thank you very much for all you have done to bring Polk State Tournament Baseball from Peoria. Trey Swiderski to lead things off here in the seventh, two, three, four in the order. One got away from Brady Matthews. Boy, Matthews has done his job. He certainly has. He has been around the zone each and every pitch since he's come in. Come in and pound on the strike zone. Off speed. Not a lot of good passes by the JCA hitters against him. That's well, there's one. one. Yeah. Line drive. Run down by the right fielder, Tyler Rosencrantz. That ball left the bat. I thought it was down for sure with the possibility of running to the wall, but Rosenquinn just flat out ran it down. What a fine catch. We saw Graham Roselle make one in left field for JCA, and then not to be outdone, what a nice running catch there it was. And that ball would have gone to the wall. Mm -hmm. so Rosenkrantz, big time play. Jake Troiner back into the ball game. He sat out a couple of innings after an accident at second base. He'll bat here. Takes that big cut. Wants to make it count. Pointer number three hitter to Junior. Another big cut pulled off with just a bit. Yes, he did, leaving a big gap in left center field. Reed DeBrant way over in right center. Taking a peek into the bottom of this inning, 7 8 9, Adam, Aiden Gaither, Brennan White, and Reed DeBrant for Columbia. This will be out of play. Matthews misses. Pointer down to first. Columbia fans thought they had had a call coming their way, not to be. Pointer at first. Beitler at the plate. 0 for three tonight.
right there down at the knees inside corner on Beitler. Matthews gets into that stretch quickly. I'm guessing there was quite a catch made after the ball ricocheted off the steel beams here in the second level of Dozer Park. This one high foul out of play and outside of the park. But they're trying to get his hands down back to back low pitches. Tried to go down and get it, but couldn't barrel it up. Matthews can go high if he wants here. Streckenberg calling for it all the way. He'll make the catch for the second out. A lot of left handed hitters here in the lineup. And Brady Matthews says that's just fine with me. And he spotted four. Another one of those steps in. Two for three tonight. A couple of singles, RBIs, run scored. Ouch. Foul that one right off his own instep. Got the bees a buzzing down there right now. Jack Steckler playing extremely deep in left field. Probably wise. Don't want any ball to get the wall. Score a runner from first base here. Want to make him scratch two hits. No balls, two strikes. Ball hit to right field. Rosencrantz. The catch. And it's simple right now. Columbia needs two to tie. Three would win it. Otherwise, Joliet Academy goes back to back. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh, and the Hilltoppers lead it four to two. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Come down to Aiden Gaither, Brennan White, and Reed Drabant. Those are the three hitters scheduled here for Columbia in the bottom of the seventh inning. Tumans come in and done a job. Matthews for his team. Columbia has done a job. Two good relief outings, respectively. So the Catholics going to have to make a couple plays to solidify this. There's going to have to be a big hit somewhere in here for Columbia to come back and do some damage. First pitch to Gaither is a strike. Gaither showed bunt. He was taking is what basically what that is. Gaither a couple of ground outs tonight. Tapper trouble. Simulik on the run makes it look easy. Oh my, that was not an easy play, but you call it. He made it look easy. And fortunately for him, that ball did take one extra bounce up in the air. So he ran through that ball. As soon as it got over the head of Tumi, I thought, that's trouble. Not so much for that fine looking, silky smooth shortstop. Brendan White. It's flown out and walked.
Reed Durbont on deck. Waved at and missed. Ball is striking it out here in the bottom of the seventh. Your state title game in Class 2A. To Kemp at second. Two gone. They said they need to make plays. They've made two of them thus far. Tuman has retired the last seven batters. Trabant, the number nine hitter. Looking to keep his team's hopes alive. To Swiderski and right. And Joliet Catholic Academy goes back to back for the school's fifth state baseball championship in history. Jared Voss picks up his fourth state title. Won it all in 2022 with a 26 and 10 record. The Hilltoppers come right back to Joliet and win it again this year with a 26, eight and one mark. Timely hitting, superlative pitching, really rock solid defense, not just tonight, but throughout the entire tournament run. Players celebrating on the field. Coaches a lot of hugs on the inside. JCO goes back to back, as you mentioned, for the first time in their storied program. Columbia, a really, really good baseball team. Well coached, well disciplined. Third place finish last year. Championship appearance this year. What a great run it's been as you have two of the best teams in Illinois here tonight, obviously, but you have two of the premier programs in Illinois as well. It was a three run first inning for JCA that proved to be the difference in an outstanding relief pitching on both sides. But for the Hilltoppers, Mike Tuman came on and slammed the door. So congratulations to our two state champions this weekend in 1A. It was Waterloo Jabot Catholic claiming that 1A title and for Julia Catholic Academy, back-to-back -back championships, fifth state title in school history, your final score, Julia Catholic four, Columbia two. For Frank Plain, Dylan Soderstrom, my partner Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Thanks for joining us for coverage of the IHSA Boys Class 1A and 2A state finals. We'll be back in Joliet next week for 3A and 4A. Stick around, awards ceremony coming up next. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today.
and then you die and so many members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors attending the tournament. They are Ron Leader of Plainfield North, representing Division 3, and Amy McMahon of Peter Corporal, Secretary and representing Division 6. At this time, we meet the Eagles of Columbia, who finished the 2023 season in second place, the final record of 33 and 5. Superintendent Chris Brody. Principal Brian Reeves. Athletic Director Scott Corner. Athletic Trainer Audrey Wirtz. Head Coach Neil O'Donnell. Assistant Coach Derek Rosicki. Assistant Coach Matt Kendall. Assistant Coach Alex Schlemmer. And now the player, number one, Nick Janet. Number two, Logan Bosch. Number three, Andrew Collier. Number four, Matt Hyman. Number five, Brady Matthews. And number six, Reed Dramont. Number seven, Logan Sabo. Number eight, Matthew Maui. Number nine, Aiden Gaither. Number ten, Zach Wetzel. Number 11, Lucas Reeling. Number 12, Jack Steckler. Number 13, Porter Fight. Number 14, Chase Schrader. Number 15, Aiden Mazanowski. Number 16, Brennan White. Number 17, Tyler Rosenkrantz. Number 18, Brody Landgraf. Number 19, Alex Schreckenberg. Number 20, Drake Wittenbrink. Number 21, Riley Peterson. Number 22, Ben Simmons. Number 26, Caleb Heck. Number 27, Cash Bailey. And number 28, Don Bailey. Jack Ryan. 
This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. <laughs> 